All right, guys, today we're going to build a pattern for an Atlas 10F compound slide. So let's go check it out. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. I've been working on this uh, compound slide here. Uh, this is off an Atlas 10F, a uh, very popular lathe. And uh, I'm sure there's plenty of guys that like to have these. Uh, they can get kind of spendy, I think, if you got to go out and try to find a good one. And good luck finding a good one, right? Because they're all old and used. Anyway, so I kind of figured I'd go about doing this here a little bit different than I did for the uh, 618. So my plan here is, uh, let's see here, get organized. So my plan is, if the light doesn't blow this out too much, uh, I'm going to build a core box, right? So the core is going to have a a little thin section here and then it'll have a, a larger uh, sort of half of a cylinder kind of a shape it's almost an oval and it will produce you know a pretty good section of this right here but also this big core where the you know the screw that goes in here uh, is gonna that's just a cavity just for that screw to ride inside of uh, nothing real high precision there Whenever we do these kind of projects, all these uh, machine surfaces, they have to get built out uh, or built back up. Uh, it's called a machining allowance. You know, you're, you're allowing extra material to machine off. So we got to do the bottom, uh, the T-slot here, the top of the T-slot spot, and then uh, along here on the back of that. Those are all machine surfaces. And in addition to that, we're going to fill up this big T-slot and uh, I've kind of made a lot of this stuff off camera already. So here's the T slot. Sort of funny, these things always seem to want to go in one way rather than the other. All right. I think that's the way, yeah. Okay, so that fits in there. So we got that pretty much filled up. Then here's the plate piece to uh, add machining allowance to that. And this will leave it up higher so that if somebody wants to use a uh, AXA style tool post uh, well, that can just get cleaned up and be left a little bit higher or it can get machined back and be just like the originals we got that all right and then we uh, have this here also and that fits right onto there and yeah, still a little bit of work to do on that now I made this extra long it doesn't need to be that long it just needs to be about an eighth of an inch would be plenty um, but the gating system is going to come in this way. So when, when the metal gets poured, it'll come in through the side of this, fill up this cavity, ultimately coming up to this level. And then we're going to put what's called a riser in here. That'll allow excess metal to come up. And as everything cools and shrinks, it'll be able to pull metal out of that reservoir into here so that the, ca the part does not shrivel up and you get uh, you know, distortion problems. Anyway, in addition to that, I built this little board here. Uh, that's going to be my machining allowance for the bottom of this. Let's pull all this stuff off of here. And this piece here will fit just into here. Okay, something like that. That'll sit on there like that. Now you can see we've got about, that's about 3 sixteenths of an inch there. So that's plenty enough to uh, machine back off. Now the next thing that we're going to need, oh, also here, I forgot to say, but this, this piece that's sticking out, uh, this is going to be where the core will be able to rest on it. It's called a core print. Uh, you leave an imprint in the sand so that your core can rest in it, right? Um, on this side, we need to make it where it matches the, the shape of this cavity in here. And that's what the, the whole half round section is going to be about. So to do that, what I've done here, it's two three quarter inch pieces of pine. It makes up uh, an inch and a half square, right? And I glued them together, but I put a piece of uh, craft paper in there, you know, like your 
brown paper bags from the grocery store. And uh, I'll be able to put this in the lathe and turn it. I can hear everybody crying already that I'm gonna be turning wood on my lathe, but you know, I don't have a wood lathe. So anyway, we'll be able to turn that and make a cylinder. And then I kind of left it V-shaped in here. We can put a chisel in there and pop this right apart. And then I'll have a, a really nice half dowel that I can glue onto here. And that'll make uh, the rest of my core print. And then we're gonna have to go through a whole process of building the box. And I've been kind of held up because I ordered uh, you know, uh, my router bit. I needed a special router bit to do this. So I bought one off of Amazon. And I didn't realize they were gonna ship it, you know, via the Pony Express uh, from China. Uh, that, that's, that's my bad, I guess I should have checked into that, but I sure didn't see anything that gave me any clues about that. Would've been nice if they would've said something that was gonna you know, take a long time. Let's uh, go over into the machine shop here and uh, see if we can make some high precision dowels, huh? So I got this, this thing chucked up in the lathe here and uh, we're gonna see if we can get this thing centered. Uh, the main thing that's important is that this split line is centered this way. If the other one, if it's off a little bit, well, it doesn't matter. We're gonna turn it into a cylinder anyway, so it's not nearly as important. Uh, these two faces are the ones that really matter. So I haven't really worked with it here too much. I just kinda roughly adjusted the jaws and put it in there and tightened it up. So we're going to be doing some wood turning and uh, I forget where I found this, but this came with uh, some turning tool or, you know, regular metal turning tools that I found uh, probably on eBay, I think, or something like that. But it's a, you know, it's a little turning gouge that somebody has made out of a piece of uh, high speed steel. So I'm going to drop that on here and I was doing some practice practice cuts here with this uh, a few days ago and uh, I had it on center and I think that's probably not actually going to work so great with this tool because uh, as it's coming around it's kind of almost just scraping on it and really they're supposed to be kind of I think angled in it's supposed to have a pretty positive attack so I think I'm going to try raising it up kind of high and that should actually kind of give us a, a more of a positive attack at the wood as it comes by. All right, let's give it a whirl here and see what happens, huh? This is making a lot better shavings than the last time I used it and uh, seems to be cut pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and keep going with it then. <sighs> All right, let's have a look here. So we're shooting for inch and an eighth and I've set these uh, bloom calipers for that. Uh, I can see we're nowhere near that, but uh, it's good to kind of keep an eye on that. Yeah, we've finally turned it into a cylinder. You can see the paper in there really good now though, and the glue. Uh, this is a great trick. Woodworkers use this all the time for turning like little half columns and stuff. I've seen a lot of this sort of stuff on like clocks and things like that. Uh, it's a pretty well known technique. I, I'm not inventing anything new here. Okay, uh, another thing for us to keep in mind, uh, this lathe is worn and the, <laughs> the spot that's worn, of course, it's the worst right in here. But as we get to the very end, it's not worn all the way up, so it kind of sweeps up. So this thing actually makes like a taper, tapering wide from this side to that side. So I need to make sure to keep an eye down here. We'll get close and we're gonna have to probably sand it to get it down to the uh, finished dimensions. So much for not taking too much at a time, huh? Actually, I think I'm pretty much right to size right there. Um, let's get some sandpaper on this. We'll clean it up. Let's take this tool off of here. <laughs> Lifting that up, that worked real good. 
uh, much better than it did uh, before. Pull the compound out of the way here. All right, so I'm just gonna use this, this bit of sandpaper is getting pretty worn out. So we're just gonna use it up the rest of the way right here. All right, that looks pretty good. Oh yeah, smudge it up, huh? <laughs> See how free that drops over there? It's still a little bit small there, but I don't think that's gonna make too much difference here for what we're working on. We only need about an inch wide section of it anyway, so. All right, let's take this off and we'll go back into the wood shop. All right, here's the moment of truth. I always feel like it's not gonna work, but it should work with no problem here. Go. Huh? Split in half, nice and pretty. Now we we'll just take it and dust it on the sander. Cut off, probably, probably try to catch some of that little bit of radius there. That'll help with the transitioning into the, um, you know, the back end of the pattern. It's always nice to have radius. I'm gonna have to put some kind of radius in there anyway, so you don't need to watch me sand. So we'll come back and we'll cut that off there and see how it, see how it looks on here. I'm gonna leave this thing long on purpose and we'll just trim it off later when we, when we get to that. And I'm gonna tell you one of my best tricks for cutting stuff square. I, I didn't put any line on this and you really don't need to. You'll notice this saw is really shiny. Look at the reflection of this dowel in the side of the plate. And as I cut, I'm, I'm looking at that too. And if I tip it, especially if I tip it that way, well, I can see it change. So I'm trying to make it look like that dowel just passes right through like it's going through a piece of glass. If you can do that really, really well, then you should be cutting square. Okay, it's pretty good to me and I didn't manage to save that little bit of radius. All right, so I've I've glued my dowel onto here, and I had to adjust the height just a little bit. Actually, uh, that's I think two and a half popsicle sticks thickness. Uh, you should always have popsicle sticks in your shop. If you don't, you're really missing out on a great tool. Anyway, uh, so I got that spot onto height, but now you can see the profile that the core is going to be shaped like. So it'll it's going to go up more or less straight. Uh, it'll have a little bit of draft on it and then it curves around. Uh, a good bit of that is, well, it's, that's gonna be nothing in there, I suppose, right? The thickness here, that's all a machining allowance, so that's all gonna get machined off. And uh, you can see I, I got a little carried away when I was planing here, I planed it too thin, so I had to glue another popsicle stick on there. So uh, I'm letting you behind the curtain here a little bit on some of those little repairs you might have to make sometimes. At any rate, uh, once we get this thing all glued together, well, probably before we glue this on, but we're gonna go around, we gotta saw all the way around this and along the core print here, all the way around on that. And that's all gonna be made sure to have draft and everything. So the next step, after assembly here, we're gonna need to start working on our core box. That's going to be the next video. All right, guys, make sure to stick around for the second part of this video. I'm going to show you how to build a core box, and we're actually going to break out some power tools. Am I really breaking out power tools? Anyway, go ahead and make sure and click on the uh, horizontal mill icon and check out some of the other videos that are coming up.